Hey everyone, welcome back to AshDev. In this episode 4 of our tutorial series, we're going to add skid marks, smoke effect, and sounds to our car to make it truly come alive. Before we start, if you're interested in getting this project, it's available in our Discord server. Please note that the project will only be available for two weeks following the release date of this episode, so be sure to hurry and grab it. And if you happen to miss the two-week window, no worries, you can still access the older projects by becoming a Patreon. This way, not only do you get access to the projects, but you also support us for making more useful content in future. Now let's start the tutorial. First, let's add some VFX. Under the References header in your script, initialize two arrays to handle these effects. The first array will be of trail renderer type, named skid marks, and the second will be of particle system type, named skid smokes. Set both arrays to a size of two, as we'll focus on the rear tires for emitting skid marks and smoke effects. Additionally, introduce a float named min side skid velocity to determine the minimum sideways sliding velocity required for the car to start emitting skid marks and smoke. Set this to a value of 10. Within the visuals region of the script, create a new function named VFX. In this function, create an if statement to check two conditions. First, whether the tire is grounded, and second, whether the car's sideways velocity's absolute value exceeds the min side skid velocity. We used absolute value because it should be enabled in both the directions, positive as well as negative x axis. To efficiently manage the VFX of skid marks and skid smokes based on the car's behavior, let's define a couple of toggle functions. First, create a function named toggle skid marks, accepting a bool toggle as its parameter. Inside, create a for each loop to iterate through each trail renderer in the skid marks array, setting its emitting property to the toggle boolean. This functionality allows for a straightforward method to activate or deactivate all skid marks simultaneously. Next, construct a similar function named toggle skid smokes, which also takes a bool toggle as its argument. As the particle system's emitting property cannot be directly toggled like trail renderers, create a for each loop for each particle system in the skid smokes array. Create an if statement within this loop. If toggle is true, call the play method on the particle system, otherwise call stop. In the VFX function, under the if condition, call toggle skid marks and toggle skid smokes with true to activate the effects. Conversely, in the else block, call these functions with false to deactivate the effects when the conditions are not met. Finally, call this function within the visuals function. To set up the VFX in the editor, begin with creating an empty game object and name it VFX. Then, create an empty RL game object under RL tire parent, then create another one for RR tire parent, and put both of these under VFX game object. Now, select both RL and RR and add a trail renderer component to each. Adjust the width to fit your needs. Ensure the emitting option is unchecked to start with, as we'll control this through our script. Set the color of both ends of the trail to black. To add a realistic fading effect, reduce the alpha value of the trail's end to zero, creating a transparent look as the skid mark extends. Under Materials, opt for the default line material or choose one that suits your game's aesthetics better. Next, attach a particle system for skid smokes. First, adjust the basic settings, set the duration to one, start lifetime to one for brief smoke puffs, and a start speed of zero, since the smoke shouldn't move initially. The start rotation can be 50 degrees to add some variety, and a gravity modifier of minus 0.1 to make the smoke rise slightly. Set the simulation space to world and scaling mode to shape, ensuring the smoke behaves consistently in the game world. Also, make sure play on awake is unticked and the culling mode is set to always simulate for continuous effect visibility. For the emission settings, change the rate over lifetime to zero to stop constant emission and add a burst setting the count to 10 for intermittent puffs of smoke, with cycles set to infinite for continuous action. In the shape settings, adjust to a sphere shape with a radius of 0.1 for concentrated smoke Set radius thickness to 0 for full density from the center and randomize direction to 1 for a natural dispersal. Activate velocity over lifetime 
opting for random between two constants for the speed modifier and choose values between 1 and 1.25 to give the smoke dynamic movement. Also, enable limit velocity over lifetime. Set the speed to 8, then set it to curve and a dampen of 0.2 to slightly slow down the particles over time. Make sure multiply by size and multiply by velocity are unticked for consistent speed. Then, under renderer settings, switch the render mode to mesh and use a low poly mesh model as the particle, creating a visual for the smoke. Assign a smoke-like material to give it the right appearance. Set the render alignment to local to keep the particles oriented correctly relative to their source. And then, activate size over lifetime and create a curve like this one to increase the size over its lifetime. And lastly, copy this component and paste its properties to the other one. Then drag and drop these two in skid marks array and skid smokes array. And let's see how they're working. And it's looking really good. To add sound effects to the car controller, under the references header in the script, create two audio source variables. One named engine sound for the car's engine sound and another named skid sound for the sound of tires skidding. Next, introduce a new header named Audio. Under this section, define two floats for controlling the pitch of the engine sound. The min pitch, ranging from 0 to 1, and you can initially set it to 1. The max pitch, ranging from 1 to 5, with an initial value of 5. These variables will allow you to simulate the change in engine pitch based on the car's speed. Now create a new region named Audio. In this, create a function named engine sound. Within this function, use mathf.lerp to interpolate the engine sound pitch between min pitch and max pitch based on the absolute value of the car velocity ratio. Finally, make sure to call the engine sound function within fixed update. For managing the skid sound effect, create a new function named toggle skid sound that accepts a boolean parameter called toggle. Within this function, set skid sound.mute to the inverse of toggle. This logic ensures the sound is muted when toggle is false and vice versa. Add the toggle skid sound function into the VFX function within the visuals region. In the if statement where conditions for skid marks and smokes are met, turn the skid sound on by calling toggle skid sound true. Conversely, in the else block where the car is not skidding, turn the skid sound off with toggle skid sound false. Now, moving back to the Unity editor, add two audio source components to the car game object. Assign your chosen engine sound clip to the first audio source and your skid sound clip to the second audio source. Then, link these audio source components to the engine sound and skid sound variables in your script. Adjust the min pitch and max pitch values for the engine sound, ensuring the audio feedback matches the speed of the car accurately. And that's it. This concludes our tutorial series on building a arcade-style car controller in Unity. As mentioned earlier, you can get the project in our Discord server for two weeks. And to ensure you don't miss out on the future projects, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell. Thank you for following along, and I look forward to seeing you in future tutorials.